All right, we are live. The final stream before the Masters. We're only doing this because there is a massive delay, and we're probably not going to get any golf for the next 48 hours. So why not have a stream to just talk about everything we've talked about this week, Re reiterate everything. I got my two good friends here, Adam at DG Betting, Brian Kirshner underscore. Thank you guys for joining on such short notice. Let's, let's talk some G. Let's talk some golf. So thank you guys for coming on. Yeah, I said I would only come on if Adam – was was potting <laughs> like we already did a pod this week like i kind of need adam's takes um yes. for the week i mean he's kind of been sprinkling them in our group chat but i kind of want something more on record closer to uh to tee off yeah i think the last time all three of us potted was uh rider cup and that's yeah not, and we that, nailed that, that yeah, one, yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> pay attention because the takes are about to be really strong because we absolutely knocked the rider cup out of the park yeah, I think we should start here as the uh, title of this stream is um, narratives, interviews. Let's talk about some of the interviews because they are – let's talk about Victor Hovland's interview. Victor Hovland, he, I listened to both of his interviews. He did one in the studio and then one um, like underneath a tree with Sky Sports, and they both were a microcosm of the same thing. He doesn't know where his game is at. He is basically like best foot forward, and that is uh, – Victor Hovland is Adam's fate of the week. So let's talk Victor Hovland. Is he lost? Is he going to play good golf? I'm in the, in the I'm in the camp if he's lost. Uh, well, we saw him boots on the ground at players, and things did not look good there. And then he he at least made the cut. I think we thought he missed the cut. He finished like T. I don't remember. He finished players. But lost like nine around the green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I tweeted the uh, the gif of I think it's from uh, Sunny Philadelphia, the one where the guys like going crazy after the uh, the uh, his interview because it made no sense, but. The worst thing I saw from him was actually today. I like was sitting on the couch. I flip on the TV. Golf Channel was on from the day before because obviously we got live from you know going. He's on the driving range. His coach is like videotaping him, not hitting balls, doing practice, <laughs> taking practice swings. Like he would go stand there. His coach would be like, "No, lean forward like a little bit more. Like no more like this. No, right, right there." He would then do a practice swing, and then they'd go look at it on video. So, uh, yeah, I. Uh, I'm a bit concerned about uh, Vic this week. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty crazy how much his odds have changed. Like, I can't. I'm not an encyclopedia of odds, one. but like the guy was like you are though to one, and now he's going off at forty. And like, shout out to people that are like actually posting like the original number <laughs> that they bet. Like, I would just be like, yeah, that's just waste. Like your like your like, uh, Ricky. Future. I mean, <laughs> it has life. I mean, let's just like just be clear here. Like Ricky six to six to one absolutely has life. But actually, completely aside, I was on the Ricky Fowler tracker stream last night. We were talking about the part there, and I'm like, yo, I want odds on this. And I went on Fantasy National. And I sorted par three, zero to 150. And Ricky was third. <laughs> was he <laughs> actually? I swear to God. And second was like Jose Maria Alvab. So like Ricky, elite, elite short par three player. So it was it was really right in front of us. Uh, but no, Hovland, yeah. I mean, I think there's certain courses where like he could just like pick it up at if he's not in great form. But I don't think Augusta is quite one of them, um, you know, but I do st still think like talent play numbers play like 40 to one Hoblin. I mean, you bet him at the same number last year, last Adam, year. and, and he, he gave you quite the sweat. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think from, from purely the like number, if you're somebody who just like bets numbers, then you should just bet Vic regardless of like all the stuff going along with him. Just cause like last year, usually guys who play good at the masters, played good in the majors the year before and have some like top yeah. finishes very recently. And obviously I had those. The crazy thing too is like I tweeted, I think in December, I think I tweeted out Vic, Rory, Rom, and Brooks. And I said, who's most likely of these four to win a major? And I think like 60% of people voted yeah. for Vic in that. And then I tweeted out the next day, I said Vic versus Scotty. And still like 40% of people said that Vic was more likely to Scotty to win a major this year. It's like insane how quickly That's things crazy. can change in like four months. The yeah. recency bias is truly a hell of a drug. So, yeah, I think Victor is 100% lost because what we saw at the players and what you saw today, I didn't even see that in the golf channel. But he did make an ace in the par three contest. So, add yeah. that to your models. Add that to yeah. your models. Um, next guy I want to talk about interview wise is Scotty Scheffler because, and we have to talk about your tweet, Brian. If Scotty is to withdraw, because he made it very <laughs> clear in his interview and he does this a lot. Like, they always he ask him in his interview. Oh, no, I'm just saying, like, the narrative around that. 
Yeah, when he, did that? He, when did is that? Just I don't like, even was know. It, was that like it might be article? fake news. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Well, because the Sam Burns said that, so it might just be fake news. Maybe yeah, Burns said it about Burns. both. Maybe Burns was like, "Yeah, if my wife gets pregnant, I'm, or if she gives birth, I'm pulling out." But Scotty will too, and Scotty's like, eh, "Maybe I don't know. We'll see." But I'm just saying because Scotty makes it so clear in his interviews because they, like they always ask him like, um, "Golf game, how, course, how you feeling?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling alright. I'm ready to uh, play my best. And if it doesn't go my way, it doesn't go my way." He his focus is so not on golf. Like, it's really not. His focus is on like life and God, truthfully. And he made that yeah, clear. He's a matter of fact. In his Man of faith. So, Brian, just recap your tweet if people didn't see it. Thoughts and, like, just overwhelming thoughts around Scotty. What tweet? What tweet? You're retiring from golf betting if he uh... – Oh, no. I mean, like, that's, like, not even – like, I think if Scotty is actually leading this tournament and he withdraws because his wife goes into labor, like, I will – like, if he's, like, whatever, like, not that it's possible. If he's, like, T27 and withdraws, like, I'll still bet. But – no, I mean, I've loved Scotty's vibe from, like, the start of the week. I, I don't know if I said this on, on your pod, but on sa- Sunday or Saturday, he was, like, at the members range with Faldo, like, ripping crazy hooks and, like, ripping crazy Fuck draws. Around. And, like, he just seems, like, in a very positive, happy mood this week. And, like, I really like that vibe out of him. I think that, again, last year being the defending champ, but I think he was a lot more uptight and nervous about his responsibilities. And now he's coming back and he's like, yo, like this is a place I'm really good at. Like I'm playing really good. Like I don't have my wife. Like he just seems like in a really good mood. And like, I really like that um, kind of vibe and, and aspect I will, out of him. I will say, and I, I think the floor for Scotty is like T3. So this isn't me saying <laughs> that I like, I literally think like that is, I think I wrote up T4. It was my floor for Scotty, but <laughs> I will say, because I've obviously wasn't there this year or at the Masters, but I've last year all the majors and even the year before, like a couple of them. He is always the happiest guy in the practice rounds. If anyone on the course, like he just doesn't give a fuck because like no one watches him. He he, ain't no one like just paying attention to him. And B, he just knows he's so much better than the other guys. Like he doesn't care about the Monday through Wednesday of any major versus these other guys who are you know looking for that magic little thing that's going to work out for them that this week. So I will say. being like happy scotty he just brings that like every fucking except when like he doesn't two putt from 90 feet and he's just like literally ripped that was head a crazy. new one I saw, I well, never when, saw like, when he hit the shot on the part three, he's like i knew it was off the right i knew it was off the right <laughs> like he i'm excited for some i i that'd be interesting if he if he doesn't give it to teddy um this week another reason this is why i really like scotty we don't have to talk about him anymore there's been a lot of parallels in the Masters. Like, I remember last year after Rob won, the 2013 winner was international, the 2003 winner was international, and the 1993 winner was international. Bubba, with Ted on the bag, won in 2012 and 2014. So I really like that aspect as well as kind of like, oh, Ted Scott won the Masters, you know, two years apart, you know, 10 years later. So I, I really like that. Do you aspect. think that is – more powerful than the last time a first time winner won fuzzy zeller was the last time there was an eclipse the week of the uh yeah the tournament no, like, I we've, mean, got, we've got some some powerful no i i think wendy c can win i'm glad you brought that up because i someone texted me about first time winners and their their take was if fuzzy z can do it wendy c can do it and that was their entire oh, no Dude, when Narrative. I was potting back in 1970, I call everyone called him fuzzy. Too. Yeah, a lot like, of people everyone. Fuzzy. I think everyone I like, called him fuzzy. I heard too. today too that Wendy is the highest rated first time, like highest ranked first time starter ever too. Yeah. So I'd have to go back, and I'm not going to do this, but like I assume that there's a reasonable amount of years where the first time starters were guys who like didn't have a great chance to win just purely off of like skill alone. So I don't know how many of those years where there was like first time starters who were. Yeah, no, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing like it in Masters history where a guy this good is making his first. Matt, you, I think your your fate is windy, though, right? My fate is definitely windy. So we'll we'll move on. Does to he play on talk- live, Adam? Do you know? <laughs> you know I think <laughs> Matt's fading all By the default. players and guys who came close to going to live. So like, yeah. he's out. Finau's out. No, why are you fading windy? Uh, for for the people that, who don't know, I am fading Wendy in our in our game. We play a one and done where you pick a guy as your one and done pick, and you pick a guy sub forty to one that has quote unquote no chance. Do any of us? I'm I think am I am I the only one who's picked a no chance that has went on to win, or have you guys too? 
I picked Jake Knapp in Mexico having no chance. That's hilarious. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't I think Jake, so. I yeah, picked I think like Jackie had the players he played well, but. Um, so yeah, Wyndham, he's my uh, no chance guy of the week. And a lot of it is because of it's his first time here, but I will say good course fit. And I'm, I'm just so hung up on him being the odds that he is. I don't think he is like, he's been 60 to 171 his whole last the, two years where he's won at. Now he's sub 40 to one. The fact you, so your pick in this game was Rory and your fade was windy. And I said, what odds would you give me on this matchup? But the fact you only gave me plus 175 was when you could we pick could have, any, any players in the whole field and you only give me plus 175 that was uh, but like was, he's still 40 to one like it's not like adam benham at like 28 to one like i think his high prices were like complete misprices like i don't think that's like a reason not to and he he, he had i don't play him he has drink i mean I, i'm not saying don't play him he's just my one guy that i don't think is gonna win sub 40 to one by the way on draft yeah, but that's not the game I got something for yeah, you. Is. Any yeah, live I, player, any any live player to win, plus two twenty five. No, is minus three thirty. I, I, I know. Like that's I, a jersey, I that's a jersey bet if I've ever heard of one. I know. I saw the no on a local. I was about to about to hammer it, but I did that last year at at the Masters, and it was a too sweaty. It was like a weird sweat. I didn't like it, so I'm not gonna do we, it again. I don't want to drive the pod. I would like to no, hear Adam's pod. thoughts about Brooks Kepka this week. Oh yeah, I was gonna go to him next because uh, I've just like that. But also to wrap up, Wendy and Adam can second this. The most confident interview I've ever heard. So. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Like the very first question was like first time starters, and he was like, "Yeah," but uh, I was also I'm pretty sure there was all these trends about me before the U.S. Open, or like about whatever my status was at the U.S. Open. I won that, and then they asked him like, "Do you feel like a rookie?" And he responded, "Well, <laughs> no, I've beat all these guys before." And I was like, "Dog." He. And then speaking of Brooks, they played together in the par three. Like I hope match, Win- yeah. I see Wendy as like mini Brooks to some degree, like the way that yeah. they play and like the fact that Wendy only seems to show up now for the big dick events. But uh, it, my Brooks take is, and I said this on, on the Ben pod uh, shout with out. jurors, shout out, get to the site, <laughs> <golf on Sarek's. laughs> right. but uh, I didn't obviously like the fact that he shot back to back 77s <laughs> at lift around, but at the same time I like, so what I did was I went back and looked at, when Brooks has won majors because he he's won every major he's won he's played the week before the major like that that's why I didn't bet him at uh, the open last year because like that's a requirement for Brooks to win he has had a few where he like played good he was like top five but then he's had a few others where he was like t4 like he made the cut but he was like way out there so that lessened it a little bit for me but then I didn't love the vibes of his press conference like he's usually pissed in his press conferences but kind of in like a fun way he just looked like disheveled and kind of angry like he was out there grinding trying to figure out his game but then today in the par three he looked great in the par three so I'm back I have no concerns at all so here's my thing Here's okay, my here thing go. about Brooks. Like, I'm not doubting Brooks at all. Like, I, I I think he can contend. I think he can win. I'm not saying that. But straight up, like, we think of Brooks as, like, this alpha before a major championship at Oak Hill. You said he looked like he was about to kill everybody. Does it, like, hurt the fact that he was playing a par three with his, like, infant son and mom? Like, that's not very Ashton. alpha of him. And I think that might, like, tear down – like his killer instinct just a little bit like to be like with jenison's and you're like so, one-year-old son playing a par three like the, for me like that kind of changes things for me and in all honesty like we talk about it as like a joke like having a kid is like a massive change in your life and like i just that has to impact him in some respect the uh what i thought was interesting was so uh, when i watched the brooks press conference it was when it was during live from so like they did the press conference they like go back to that little set that they're on and uh aaron oberholzer uh was like yeah. yeah he was like i thought brooks was top five coming into this event but based on everything you said about being a dad like i'm kind of out on him this week like i was i was a dad like it went through what brooks went through like it really fucks you up and like now at the same time, on the live from set, they said a bunch of shit that made no sense. So it's like you got to balance that out. But but you were like, like, "Damn, good take." I was like, "Fuck." Yeah. I was like, "I got a weird vibe from the press conference," and that was the first thing he said. And then I was like, ah, "I don't like that. I don't want that." But so, like, at, like at the end of the day, I said at the beginning of the week, like Brooks twenty, like you just bet it. I think there's a lot going on with him because the, the dude switched putters now twice during the week. He went from the the mallet back to the blade in the round, and then back to the mallet. Like, there's I think there's a lot going on in his brain right now. I mean, too like, much for Brooks. In, this isn't like a rocket science take, but like 
the first round will be decisive. If Brooks goes out there and plays good in the first round, everything he's, from that we've live, just talked yeah. about doesn't matter whatsoever. Because as soon as, in my opinion, he gets a taste of like the action, that's all he needs. What about to... Oak Hill? But I think also like the Masters, I don't know how long it's been. It's like you have to be top. You have to. I think so. I think like that aspect plus just like the vibes with Brooks right now. I think if yeah. he gets off to a good start, we're vibing. If he gets off to a bad start. And that's what I like. I wrote this up and I, this is how I feel about it. Like. I'm betting him because it's 22 to one on Brooks Kepka to major. And I'm betting that like most of the time, but I think his floor of like playing terrible or missing oh. a cut or just like mailing it in yeah. is way more existent than like all the other guys in like yeah. that. And another thing there. about Brooks for me is like a lot of guys that contend heavily at Augusta don't play well the next year. Like there's not a lot of, there's a lot of crossover in the leaderboard, but like guys top fiving usually don't like top five back to back year. Like, yeah, Jordan Spieth is a good take. Other guys have done it. But like, if you look at the top tens of leaderboards, like they usually don't play exceptional. So you're out on uh, Russ Henley. Henley Yeah. Like actually, like I'm not, I'm like not even joking. Like I was going to bet him first round leader, like in DFS, like top 20, like, I don't think Russ Henley's the type of guy that's just going to top 10 back-to-back years. I will say Russ Henley's interview, I didn't see it. I only read the transcript. He was hyped. He was like, I love the fucking Masters. Like, I'm playing the best golf of my career. Like, I can't wait for the tournament to start. When I, Because I said I was going to bet him last night, and then I switched to Cam Smith. Because, like, as I was, like, placing bets and doing the write-up, I was like, I was writing up why I didn't bet Cam Smith and that I was going to bet Russ Henley instead. And I was like, you're so fucking stupid. Like yeah. you're betting. You, you can't pick Russ Henley. But I, the reason I bet was going to bet him is because he was so hyped in his interview. He was just like fired up. Wow. Like, uh, was it Denny? Like I can win the master's <laughs> level. Uh, it was, Wait, apparently it's, Denny's going to be like 12% owned on draft. I like Denny. Cause he's blatantly mispriced. He's priced with lo- like <laughs> legends of the game. He's, he's a hundred dollars more of- expensive than fucking Zach Johnson. Who I think will make the cut this week. I like CJ. Um, yeah. real quick, <laughs> subscribe to. The- we are giving away a TaylorMade Spider, so subscribe to the channel. Uh, yeah. Channel and tweet it out. Uh, you want to do putter? Subscribe. Um, yeah. So any other interview notes? The last thing I wanted to note was like Tommy Fleetwood got an Augusta National caddy, boost his stock obviously, uh, coming off of a good week. Cho Hatton joked about his in his interview with Matt Fitz how he hates the golf course still and has no he literally said I have no chance. What week, odds would, would Hatton have to be for you to place an outright bet on him? Like 150 uh, and I wouldn't. I don't even think well, no, no, I'm saying like legit outright. like what price no. would you see where you actually like fuck it, I have to bet Hatton? I was thinking like 500 to one. 500, yeah. I was That's gonna say 500. Crazy. Dude, he, like he melted down, <laughs> so melted down hard with the lead on Liv last week, like multiple the times. Second he touched the lead, you just guys are off sick. The plane. We're not. It's true, man. It's fucking true. I was like kind of watching, but like I wasn't watching. Like, oh my god, hat and like completely blew it. Um. All right, let's talk. Will Zalatoris didn't have. I didn't see his interview. Didn't have any bolt interview takes. Did you guys listen to Tip? Uh, I'll yes, that was a good, what'd you guys a, think about Andy's, uh, Andy's points on, on Zal as boots on the ground guys. Uh, yeah. As boots on the ground guys, I love to hear when somebody's playing good boots on the ground. Like I, because I value somebody playing good in practice yeah. rounds. Like that's something that's important to me and I've seen it. But so my concern was Zal and I bet Zal, so it's not a big concern, but like I saw him at Brookline playing great in the practice rounds, bet him at Brookline. Obviously we know almost one there. But then, just a couple of weeks ago, we saw him players. at players. Right. He was fucking in the practice rounds too, looking. And so, now he fucked him up. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like it. It's way better than hearing that he was playing bad. But my Zal like practice round judgment, I was gonna have to wait and see. If he plays good this time, then we can trust Zal practice round playing good. If he plays bad, then we can't trust Zal. Honestly, hard. guys, Zal top twenty is immortal for me. Like, I, I, there is no. I don't, I'm not trying to emotion. I don't like, like this I right fucking now. bet a ton of money on it. Zal will be in the top 20 this week. Like, there is no doubt in my fucking mind. Like, Zal will be relevant in this golf tournament. I liked what he talked about with his feel on the greens. Like, he's like, fuck the aim point. Either you either have it on these greens or you don't have it. And he's like, I, lo- I feel so comfortable. Feel like an artist. In- insert Camden Grawley like gif. He feels like an artist. He's proven it here before. Like, I agree with you, Brian. More like he will be relevant in this tournament. His? If there's one guy, like maybe I have a ticket on him, but like if there's one guy I have FOMO on, it's it's Al for sure. What was that? Well, I don't his I don't. his just putting in majors is insane. Like he it, it all different types this. of majors. like it was just like he just shows up. Was that Cam Davis top 20 lock? <laughs> Adam, why did you bet him? So we were doing the pod, we got to like the end of the pod, and <laughs> 
Jers was hyping up. I think Jers and we end almost every pod with Jers hyping up Cam Davis. And then I like said that I would bet him too. And then I wasn't going to bet him because once I actually looked at like his stats, I was like, fuck no. I was like, the only long shot I'm betting is Taylor Moore. And then somebody in the Discord was like, didn't you say you're going to bet Cam Davis? And then I felt bad and I was like, all right, I got to bet Cam Davis. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to be, uh, I didn't want to say I bet someone I didn't is bet. Is Cam, like, are you guys guaranteeing Cam Davis will make the cut? No. Yes. I, th- I think it's more likely he shoots 80 than wins the tournament, but I still bet him to win the tournament. Um, he's, he's, when- he's Matt's guy. Yeah, that was our official Vincerix pod <laughs> pick of the week because someone asked if we gives out picks, and that was our official pick of the week. So Cam Davis, 350 to 1. Heard it there first. I mean, look, he, this guy in the comments is, knows what he's talking about. All she's do well at Augusta, and that's what we it's said. Awesome. The top on the three on the drifters list, again, shout out golf.vincerix.com. Top three drifters, Minwoo, Cam Smith, Jay Day, the Aussies. No love for the Aussies. The Aussies. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy, dude. Uh, Brian, talk to us about your fade, Dustin Johnson. What's the deal? I think it's washed. Sucked to live Miami. Like, I know he won Live Vegas, um, which, you know, I think Adam. there are, you can draw some parallels um, between the two courses. But um, no, I just like Dustin Johnson shouldn't be 40 to what? I will say uh, my girlfriend's single B. Rom last year, if you guys remember that. Okay. She uh, decided to make a card this year. She's got three people. Zal Brooks, DJ. So wow. just, just add that to the model. Just some heavy <laughs> Yeah, so, so add that to the model. And she did say Fleetwood has no chance, so she does, in fact, know <laughs> yeah, ball. Yeah, she knows ball. She, yeah, knows she, knows ball. Ball. she does, in fact, know ball. Um, okay, next guy who I want to talk about is probably Decky. Decky. Brian. Adam. You yeah, I mean, him. I just think the number's too short. Like, I, I'm not like, oh, he's not going to play well because it makes sense. Like, I just think the number's too short. Would never bet it. Um, I will say well, he is both going to win the tournament, and I think twenty to one's the worst, like a horrible bet at the same time. Yeah, I can second that. I can second that. You and really I'll, think Decky's going to be a two-time major champion? I don't see two-time Masters champion. I don't. I don't see that. I don't. It's not that crazy. Okay, he, but think about a lot of guys that win the majors that are in his caliber. They're one-time major champions: Adam Scott, Patrick Reed, Sergio Garcia, like Trevor Immelman, like. All those, unless you're like a number one player in the world, you usually don't want to guess it twice. Uh, quick aside, Trevor Immelman in the par three contest today. Yips. Like the guy cannot <laughs> could make not can't, Like inside three yeah. feet. Like it was just, could, no one was really putting the three footers, but he kept putting them seriously. So how do they score that? It's like, if, if you're taking, if you don't, as you, soon as somebody else hits your ball, like yeah. if you let your kid hit the ball or anything, like you're out. But if you like keep playing it normal, then they'll count your score. But like I think only like eight guys. I guess it makes sense. There's no odds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like think, okay, that checks out. I, I think the most embarrassing thing you can do though is because most guys like at some point have somebody hit their ball and like they're out, but they'll still keep their score. Like it shows on the like website what they shot or whatever. If you're a guy who plays out like the full round of nine holes and post your score and you don't win, it's like what was like what, what, what are you doing? Yeah, like, what are you doing? Step and post. We're not even come close. Step and posty two shots off the lead. Like they didn't want. They wanted to post that. I'm honestly like I I'm like people are emailing me masters pools. Posty is like my Posty and Eckroad are like my locks to make the cut. And I like Fox. Eckroad had a good interview. Ah! I'll I'll say that Eckroad had a good interview. He said that he he went there Ah. the week after the week after the Honda. And he said that he doesn't think it's a perfect course for him, but he's called it a ball strikers golf course that you have to drive the ball well. And he said it suits his game. I just worry about guys who just like hemorrhage strokes around the greens. Like Ekro could lose infinity strokes around the green. Dude, he won. It's the Oklahoma State there. guys. He like, his stats are weird. Like he'll go on three, three week stretches where his around the green play is good. And then he'll go on like eight weeks where it's just off the, off the, the planet. Yeah, we should have been on him. I he last man off the card wrote him up bad beat. Yeah. What Ekro was last man off the card? Can yeah. we talk weather? No, at uh at uh Honda. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say Ekro let's do an over under the card. Over under time we have the first tee shot. I mean, I think they probably I'll tee off around like noon one. Oh yeah, I'll set it at like eleven thirty. You think they they tie up tee off before eleven thirty? I think we off before eleven thirty. I suck so much when it comes to like delays of guessing what's gonna happen. Okay. I don't even. I'll just when they're ready to golf, just let me know. Like that, that's my, I'll be ready. Yeah, I think they're gonna hold out as long as possible because the last thing they want is even like a 
a four group advantage of a wave split. Like that's just so not Augusta National. Like they will hold out as long as they need to. I don't know. I mean, I, I like there were so many delays last year and they still got it in on Sunday. Like I don't think saying. there's any issue of like them like getting it in, but like, yeah, I guess the reason why there was a big wave split was because Friday afternoon was like really, really bad, but the morning was fine. And I think Saturday morning was insane. Remember, it was like 40 degrees. Guys were driving it like 180 yards on 18. And they I thought that was Friday afternoon. I could be mistaken. No, they came but... back because somebody, I couldn't remember, but somebody in the Discord was talking about it. Like, they came back on Saturday morning, and that's when JT okay. like, blew the cut. But it was so oh cold and wet that guys were like hitting yeah. like three woods into 18. Yeah. I think that's I don't see got... any of that this week. Like Friday looks consistently tough all day and Saturday looks decently hard. And then Sunday looks very scorable. But like I don't looking at the weather, I looked at it a ton. Like even with no delays, I'm not seeing much of an advantage. The only thing I could think is that if you're sent out early on thursday like they tee off at like 10 11 and it's still raining and a bit windy obviously that would be a disadvantage but i like i don't think there's like any advantage to like playing friday early i didn't like in any way factor tee times into like the guys that i bet but i will say most of them have morning tee times tomorrow so i fully expect them to make them tee off in fucking atrocious conditions just because i know i'm gonna get like screwed the worst possible yeah whatever whatever the worst thing that can happen to the thursday morning tee times that's what i expect that um go ahead ron what do you guys like i know adam you know it's like kind of a bit but like what are your honest overall thoughts about xander zero chance he will not win the masters club it um, I just think it's I'm I'm in your camp, Brian. I think it's hilarious that like the, the narrative around Xander's whole career now he's the most popular golfer at the freaking Masters. Like it's Xander Shoffley. I I know you said the last three weeks like you think Xander's gonna be like fake sneaky and like that came so true, so true. Yeah. Like I can't I, believe the people. Like I truly like it's really surprising to me the amount of people that bet him at like 14, 16. It's because like one. how many weeks of the year? Or is he the same price as Cantlay and Hovland and those type of guys? And now those guys are like 40, 50 to one. Cantlay's odds are like, and I know Cantlay hasn't been playing as as well, but like, again, when it's not strokes getting consistency and the the green, all the great numbers, what's the difference between fucking Cantlay and Xander? They're usually the same guy. He's the only one when you look at their profile that looks like the slightest bit bit similar to Scotty Scheffler. It's all this green. Like Xander is the perfect golfer, like we always say. And like I said, like I texted you yesterday in the chat, my girlfriend looked at Xander's profile and she said, that's a lot of green. And that's that of zero golf knowledge. That's what everyone's thinking. That's a lot of green. Xander Shoffley, let's do it. So, but I look, but Adam, you, do you Adam. think he'll be relevant in this tournament? Yeah. I've said, I think he could finish second place. Like I don't, I think his floor is like T 14. Like I, I, th- I don't, I don't expect yeah. him to play bad. I'm just saying that, like, I don't think he has the guts to win the Masters. I honestly don't, and I don't care like how amazing his stats are because, like, I looked back. He's been in the top five of the, my Masters model for like four years in a row. Like, it's not just this year that all of a sudden. Oh, my God. Who is your top? Who is your top five Masters? Hideki. Um, uh, it is. Scotty Hideki. Shout out golfabstacks.com. Scotty, Rom, Xander, Neiman. Hideki. Where um, are you at on Jacko? I just don't like, I think he plays really RJ. well. Like he's just playing so, and he's been playing so good. Like not just even before live, like he went down to Australia. He fucked in Australia, like played really good, but he's just never mixed in a major. So at his price, I can't bet him or like be involved with him, but I do think he, this is the first time where I think he at least, I feel like he's a guy who on Saturday, it's like, oh, Jocko's playing. Like, so he starts to like, people are like, oh, Jocko. And next thing you know, he's like T22 because he ejects. But I think there's a moment where we think Jocko is mixing. Yeah, I just, you know, I know you guys watch a lot more live than me. And I I made the point on my pod last night. Like, I just feel like if he was on the PGA Tour, he would have to have an incredible season for him to be 28 to 1 at the Masters. Like, I almost feel like he's lower Given that he won I on the DP you. World Tour and like won two slap, so let's say events. okay, that, like what would he have to do on the PGA? Yeah, Tour that's what I was gonna say. Like, what do you think he would have to do to be twenty eight one? I think he would have to win an elevated event and like be top five. But like Ludwig's fucking thirty three to one. Ludwig's won the RSM. 
Ludwig sucks and he's fucking 33 to one. Like I don't <laughs> Adam's like, Ludwig takes, like I don't even know like which way it's gonna go. Like who do you who do you think is a better Ludwig. golfer, Ludwig or Jocko? It's a good question. I think it's uh, I, I, well, that's a great question. Like I wrote, I wrote them up right next to each other because they're in the same like area of the odds. And I settled on that I think Jocko at the moment is a more skilled golfer than Ludwig. And at least Jocko's played in the majors. Like he hasn't played good, but this isn't his very first major. Yeah. I this week of head to head, I'm taking Jocko over Ludwig. Long term, I don't know, but today. Jocko. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I uh like people talk about Homa's major record, like people talk about other people's major record. Like Nino truly first has man. like the worst of like <laughs> any elite player. Like it's and like I said, it's impressive um to play 20 majors and not have one top 15 like go back crazy. 10 minutes for the russell henley take just, yeah we talked just about russell henley um yeah i think i'm with you guys on that i will but say jocko's uh, best finish was t16 here last yeah. year and he did not hit his irons good at all and he's been flushing his irons so i, I was, really I, think like my jocko finishing position t I think he can top ten. I really do. I think, really? I, think he, I think he tops ten, but I don't think there he's ever like in the I think if he finishes tournament. inside the top twelve, I'll admit he's good at golf. It could be a backdoor. Like I he might back I think he he hops up there, starts to put his name in the mix on Saturday, falls back where he's like completely out of it by Sunday starts, and then backdoors his way back up. He's just been playing so consistently. He was the one guy, I mean, I think Adam and I talked about this on our show that he turned my head at Liv Durrell. I know he didn't finish great, he finished a T9, but he was like, was like, this guy is different. Hit the ball louder than anyone else, different than anyone else. I want to talk about, we haven't talked, neither of us, since the interview. Rory, his Rory's interview and overall, <laughs> overall Rory thoughts after his interview and week. Well, I, 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 I want to go first. first. No, I think Jersey has to start first because you, I, I was, because it like, I was watching back some of the pod because sometimes I listen back to the pod because I'm like, what did I say about this guy? Because like, I want to go with, I usually go with what I said on the pod because that's my true like gut instinct. And then I get all into the numbers and overthink things. You sounded like you were in on Rory, but then by the end you were like, he's yeah, no you convinced dog. me out and you said you're out and now you're back in. So I need to hear it from you first, actually, is why you're betting Rory and why you truly believe at 13 to one that he is a good bet after not winning a major in over a decade and having like one good start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's funny that you said that about the no dog thing because my friend Brendan called me and he's like, I know you're betting Rory and Spieth after Adam talked you out of it. And I was like, like honestly, I forgot about that. But yeah, Adam did talk me out of it. And I just can't get over – I just can't get over how much I love Rory at Augusta. And that's that simple. It's truly that simple. And I, I, it's not like I'm single bulleting him. I have a few other guys on the card. I was able to fit Jordan and Will Zaltoris, and I didn't love anyone. I didn't love anyone. The next guy I probably loved was Cam Young and Justin Thomas. I was like, do I really just want to bet these two guys versus Rory McIlroy? Do I? I'd be so mad if I wasn't on Rory. It's it boiled down to I didn't not I didn't not love these next guys. Anybody, and you could still get two guys you think can win. What? Like you could bet Rory and still bet two guys you think you could win also. Like it doesn't right. like completely like fuck up your car. You're playing. You're really going with an old. You've got you've got Rory and Spieth. As you said, you're playing the hits. You're going. You're. This is a twenty. I did say that. Yeah. Fifteen. Like I said, play the hits. A decade later, this is the time. I like I. I support the fact that you are so committed to Rory at Augusta because if I personally yeah. had bet him single bullet last year and he missed the cut, I would never bet him ever. Like, and that's kind of my, like, that's me with Xander a little bit. Like Xander's fucked me so many times that I don't even care. Like I'm just out on Xander entirely that he can't suck me back in. I respect the fact that you're sticking with your guns on Rory because I'm not like. Yeah. To here. me, like it's, you know, trying to analyze jurors picking Rory. Like, it doesn't make sense to me why. Like, <laughs> like with that, I'm like, I don't really get why you're betting Rory here. Like, I understand, like, at the other majors, like, I do. But, like, to be like, yeah, like, Rory and Augusta, like, I just I just don't fully expect it from you. But, like, BK, do you think, surprised. like, you texted or you, you seemingly are high on Rory? Like, it sounds like you're high. Like, What's yeah. your what's your Rory take? Because yeah, I, I mean, I think that Rory, like I like the way he's going about Augusta this year. Like I like that Butch is on site. I like that he said fuck you to the media. I like that he showed up late. Like I still like I, I'm more of the sense of like it's really good for golf if he contends, and like he should contend. Like it's embarrassing if he doesn't. And will he win? No, I, I really don't think so. Like, but I think that. Like last year, I think there were signs of like 
yeah, I played 81 holes in the past two months. It's like, all right, like I'm not really sure if like that's kind of how you want to go about it. So I guess I like how he's going about it, Matt, but at the end of the day, like it's a coin flip. What he, he like easily... how if Rory is to win the Masters, how do you see it playing out? Like, get, walk me through okay. starting to through the tomorrow through the final round. What how's it work? How's he win? Okay, that's a g- great question. I think <laughs> it is really one, another tipping point that got me on him. I you can say that he's going to get lapped. I love that he's playing with Scotty Scheffler in round one and round two. I think that's a great barometer for like what he needs to do. Yeah, or he'll be focused be like right to. out of the gate for sure. Right. Like I'm playing with Scotty. Like I'm not playing with Tiger. I don't have all this like extra weird pressure. Like I'm playing with Scotty. Like this is the, this is the, this is the bar. This is like Wyndham says, this is the bar. So I think it has to go like, I don't expect him to go wire to wire within a few shots around but the whole. But he started horribly at the Masters. And, but that's Rory in everything. We need him to get out to a good know. start. We need not him everything. to get out to a good start. He if he gets out to a good start, we're down. And when he starts fast, he's there. Like he's, my he whole Rory, my like Rory take, and I've been consistent on this. It's like I, I like Rory. Like I don't have anything. I like him as a person. I think he's like yeah. I support him. Like you, player. if you had no one in the yes. mix and Rory yeah. was yeah. missing, like, you would like cool. be yeah. happy like, if you. I literally don't care. That's totally fine. I'd support it. Like if it was him against Scotty, I'm, I'm going for Rory. But like my take on him forever has been the man. We could we do this before every major. It's always different this time. Oh, he this 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 this, and he loses every fucking time. Sometimes he plays good. Sometimes he plays horrible. Sometimes he ejects. And so I'm just going to stick with the take that I don't believe this time is different until it is different because it's so. Been right uh, right. Do you throughout. think that he can win the U.S. Open? I Rory. Yes, I would say I believe he's more likely to win any of the other majors besides the Masters. But I also even and this is you guys know this like even other majors I still don't think he can win it this way. It's been so okay. long since he's won that I think like any major is a high bar for him to win. But the Masters is like you take that bar and then you move it up even another notch. Now, but to Jersey's point. Yes, Augusta is the perfect course for Rory, but it's been the perfect course for him forever. Yeah, and he hasn't never. It's raining. <laughs> yeah, he That's just, literally that why Jers bet him last year. Like, How I'm not that, even joking. What was I wrote Rory's that up this form, year too? What was Rory's form in the November Masters? Because that's the one he should have won. Right. What? Like the, the conditions fest, the were so Masters, easy yep. then. That's the one he yeah. that should have been. Like, I'm yeah, like, I mean, it is question. still crazy that he's never won a PGA Tour event below minus ten. I was surprised. I was looking at because I like was looking was at the it his, Scottish. The historical odds that was like that was like minus it was minus I was, 11, I think. That was like 12. Wow, but like okay, he uh, Bobby was, Mac, shout out. <laughs> shout out. I wish he was playing. I forgot <laughs> that Rory was like in 2021 and 2022, Rory was plus 1600 and plus 1900. Like he was, I had him for, 20 like, last year or like two, or two years ago. Yeah, last year, yeah. two years ago. I, was, I don't remember. Yeah, I picked, I he must have got a Valero. Yeah, I don't feel like I was as into golf betting then, but I feel like. I don't remember him being anything but the favorite, like every time coming. Yeah, to I remember. I looked at my card for two matches ago, and I had Rory twenty to one. So, um, any other runners? I don't remember. I I've been honestly bad in the major, so I'm probably won't have a guy in the mix this week. The I've fact that Bryson at the 2020 was plus nine fifty. That's the craziest oh. thing of all time. How do you, I Matt? You said you that. like Bryson this. I week. like Bryson. Like, what, I like Bryson this week too. What's What's your finishing position for Bryson for both of you? Um, I, I like you. I'll go, yeah, I'll say T11. That'd be I do like what your take about the, I like your take about the, the spike irons though, that he doesn't have. Cause I didn't. Yeah. But I do think like, I think he is driving it, but even obviously he's not driving it as far as those couple years, like most recent years. But I think this year is the year where he's going to be able to be most aggressive with his driver. Cause he's hitting it so straight right now. Like he's so dialed it back straight. a little bit. Yeah. So I don't I, know why Bryson's like been bad at Augusta. And I think like the, Single length iron, uneven lives. Like, I think that's bullshit. I think it's just short. Like, I don't, I think around the greens, his weakest point of his game and approaches okay. is like second weakest. But okay. I don't think you said, like, Matt, your take was that he wins a uh, green jack in his career. I don't know about I that, do. but I do think he's going to continue to improve. Like, he's going to play well at the Masters at some point, And this could be, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Anyone else you guys want to touch on before we uh get out of here? Jordan Spieth. Yeah, I know Adam oh. thought his interview was insane. <laughs> what one guy we did I, I did text after Jordan's interview that he sounds like golf has broken his brain. I don't think he wins a golf tournament ever again. That was kind of a fake take. Like I wouldn't be that surprised if he was in the mix this week. But we haven't even mentioned John Rom. John Rom is the forgotten man of the oh, week. We, like, we said that. Yeah, like in why can't Rom win? Rom can win. He won last year and he upended the world of golf. So, so what's your you're like BK, you're 
Rom can't win. That's your, your Rom will not win the green jacket. Like no chance. No chance. He's not gonna win. Matt, and like I, I just no. Like Matt, I'm just you're on Rom. Like I don't sitting think up he's... there with his fucking legion hat, like <laughs> defending Masters champion. It's like, hilarious. No, he feels embarrassed. Like the... he must feel like it's I like embarrassing. Do. Like genuinely. Yeah, I do. And like the three guys that have repeated, two of them are the greatest golfers of all time. And foul though, a guy missed a two a, a foot and a half putt to win the Masters. So he shouldn't <laughs> have actually won back to back. I always um, forget about that. And then you see the video. Imagine if somebody did that. Let's just pick a random fuck. How like how no, good was that? Now? How good Sorry, was that? How good was that guy? Like, was he a good golfer? Not really at the time? That good. So, was like, let's say, yeah, Fina. No, and like, no. What I will say is that, like, people because NLU does like major deep dives, and they always talk about like, yo, people just like miss two foot putts like all the time back in the day. Like <laughs> now, like no one ever misses them. It's like a crazy thing. But like, even the putter technology has like changed. A yeah. Ton. Oh yeah, that that putt of that guy, he's like literally lined up like outside the <laughs> yeah. hole. Like takes like five minutes to hit it. Like doesn't like so yeah, Faldo shouldn't have really won back to back. And the, the other two guys are the greatest cowboys of all. The time. funniest like, part of the video is that Faldo's in the little box in the corner yeah. of the screen. Like like just so, he looks so mad because he like wasn't gonna win. And then he doesn't even react. He's like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, and then he makes like a 30 footer on the next <laughs> hole and like goes nuts. Um but yeah, shout out Faldo. I love Faldo. Like he's in my dream for him. Absolute unit of a human. Absolute yeah. unit of a human. I uh, any um, any masters dinners take. Faldo's a unit of a human. That's my take. Who's uh who's did your long shot of the week, PK? Acro or Sep. I like Sep. Posty. I like Sep. I don't yeah. know why. I think Sep like Sep being T6 going into Sunday would not surprise me one bit. Yeah, I mean, he's fucked at like two of the last four majors. <laughs> he's got Doc. Georgia, like another ace. Where is Sep winning this year? Good question, actually. <laughs> Masters uh, preview pod. <laughs> Boy, well, where is Sep winning this year? Vince Norman's not been playing good, so I'll say Canada. I don't think Seth would go up to Canada. Eh, maybe he would. He's international in Austria. Alex Smalley's mom told me that the Canada trip is the worst thing ever in the in the PGA Tour because they have to take a sh- like a ten minute shuttle from the range to the course, and like players like almost miss tee times all the time. Fun fact. And also, you have to like use your passport and shit. Um, and yeah, they had sometimes players are walking on the road because they can't. Well, I they're can't, not playing. Like, there's so much traffic. Yeah, it's play. a different course. But he said the last two Canadas were a mess. Adam, remember. Uh, uh, Remember the Canadian Open? I can I, I forever remember the Canadian Open because I had just gotten to LA for the uh, US Open the next week, and I was sitting on this like bluff up above the water in Santa Monica, like it was beautiful. And I was watching on my phone because it just kept like the you know the plan it just kept going. I was like I was waiting to go to my Airbnb. So uh, yeah, I will always remember uh, the that be hole in hole one. Nick Who's, who are you guys holding one picks? Great question. No, I don't like holding one at the Masters. Why? They all, there's holding ones at the Masters every year. The I Aussie just don't get a good vibe from it. I feel like it's only Sunday afternoon. Yeah, the odds are also awful. I was looking. There's it guys. Yeah. Like, it's like sixty to one. We know Luke the first, we know the hole in one market. Like everyone's yeah. eighty and above, and there was guys at like 40, 50. Yeah, it, it, and it's so like it's usually like one guy like favorites at yeah. like eighty, and then it's a hundred and above for everybody. This is like there's like twenty guys under like hundred to one. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's a travesty, just, dude. We must have fucking ran go, them. Golf out bet the posted today. Luke Luke List made a hole in one, and they were like seventy to one to make a hole in one this week. And I was like, those are great odds. The so, dude who the the eagle market one that you t- uh, tweeted today. I can't find it. Lock of the I, I can't find it either. But absolute. <laughs> what, Wendy making an e- he was six to one to make an eagle in the first round. If you just bet that, if he's six to one every round and you bet it all four rounds, generational wealth. No, we need to find <laughs> it. Yeah, we have to bet that he will make an eagle. I said he'd make. I, was, I looked for it earlier. I was trying to parlay. You can't par- <laughs> You can't parlay anything with Scotty to win involved. Really? Golf. Nothing. Like I bet, I bet UConn to win by one to ten with parlay with Scotty. Um, and that went through, but you can't parlay any golf pick with Scotty to win. Of course, that was the one that went through. What? The one that didn't win. Did uh? 
did uh, Portnoy being on Scheffler is it? Does that where you would all be? Okay, no, he just won his UConn pick, so he's yeah, he's like no, it. like I there's nothing, like I won't be the only person I think I'll be mad. Well, I have a Zal ticket. I'll just say that. yeah, that's fine. Uh, uh, the unofficial card, you are like, like what do you? I'm not the whole Vic Laffit. Like I have Zal ticket. Like what do you want me to do? Like I like, all right, you I, can't Vic Laffit. I will. I dude, I would if, never. It, when Devo only the, the, Devo is gonna lose his mind when he hears about this. He's gotta be listening to this podcast 45 <laughs> minutes in. Only the 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 I, people that are watching know that Brian's so tops this week. Um, what's your what is your ROI? Let me ask. And include Ricky. <laughs> I'm not kidding. What is your ROI? It's probably is Joe Ardoni. And if Joe Ardoni, drop a comment in the chat if you're in here. Yeah, I will no, say I um it's probably like three, it's probably like three something because I was crunching some numbers on some cards that I saw on Twitter this week. Because I won't name any names, but there are some some cards out there this week. And if you have <laughs> people add Scotty and a bunch of other people, Scotty plus like Zal, Ricky, Cam, three, like three, three. That's my estimated like uh, ROI. No, but honestly, like real, like if I genuinely had no, and they're like small wagers, like it, it's not a big deal. But like if you genuinely, I was thinking about it. If I just bet Scotty, like six and a half to one or six to one, like that, that's just like all profit. Like there's no, the only thing that not betting Scotty single bullet hurts is like you have to hit one every something week. You know what I mean? I lost the take. <laughs> I, yeah, I, like, I like basically, take. like if you have no other bets, there's no disadvantage to betting someone single bullet at four and a four or five to one because you're getting all the money, and it's just a matter of like you have to hit every once every couple weeks, but that money will still cover you. So, but you're, is, is this the, the, the gist of like you're going to be nine x at Rocket Mortgage? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. The gist is like if you had no other bets and you bet Scotty five to one to win four or five grand, there's nothing wrong with that from an ROI standpoint. Okay, if you're just single ballooning, I I see what you're saying, but you didn't do that because you were just winning all that money versus Rocket. like having a five x card with a ton of guys. Understood. Under, I, I, yeah. I see where you're it, going. It's, it's like the money's going here. It's all the same, but like it's how the money is like moving around feels different. Sure. We are in the weeds. A sure. quick, quick note, because I, I, I kind of lost it because I was reading some of this on Twitter. It's about Tiger Woods' liability for the sports books. It's all this. Creators. Our largest liability is, of course, Tiger. Everything Tiger related is getting action, and the volume of the Tiger film matchup prop has been unbelievable. People are just. What are you guys liking that? Tiger. Yeah. Tiger. Really? He withdraws every event he plays. That's... Yeah, that is a that is a that I'm is like a, Phil, a, like I don't think Phil's gonna finish runner up, but like I like That's Phil so in so it. So like I would nuke Phil. I will say, because like again, this is just we're too far inside ball. Like I listen to the live press conferences. Phil sounds confident about it. Like Where he, are you listening to those? They're on uh golf? they're on YouTube. Golf. No, I'm talking to uh, I don't know where the Masters interviews are. They're on the Masters website, but I'm saying the Live Golf, the Live tournament, like at yeah, like Live Miami with with three guys in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they do the three man interviews, Phil at Live Miami, he just like he's just such a good talker that when he's talking about like his game and where he's asked at Augusta, I'm always like, you know what? Maybe like I could see it. And he legit shot what like plus eighteen? Oh, he like he played. He's played terrible. Every (laughs) there's not been one event where like he played good, but. <laughs> I mean, he literally is, but he, he he wasn't playing good last year either, and he wasn't playing good when he won the fucking PGA. Like Phil is insane. no, he was playing decent. He was playing better than he is now, but still, like his first round leader. Yeah, Phil does it. He does insane stuff. He does. Oh insane yeah, well, sorry. Stuff. I like. I might bet Phil. Okay. Outright. Yeah. Oh, and and <laughs> no. And Tiger, oh, and Tiger makes the cut plus one hundred five though. I like that. But like coming into uh, the Masters last year, his finishes were T twenty seven, T thirty, T forty one. This year, <laughs> wait, Phil was T six at Live Jetta. Did is we that we're right? all sleeping? So maybe it, wasn't that it, in October though? No, last, wow, that was recently March third. Phil, this was the leaderboard: Neiman, Schwartzel, shout out Schwartzel. Like this year, <laughs> like literally March third of twenty twenty four. Neiman, Schwartzel, Usti. Bryson, Rom, and then a tie for six between Phil, Chuck, Howell, and Coke City. 
Wow. That's, that's correlation. I like Phil. Um, Eric Van Royen is on. No, uh, I don't want to know. He's not Scotty. Really? Yeah. Fuck yes, dude. Um, Eric Van Royen's minus one twenty to be the top South African. I saw that. Van Royen is missing the cut, and I love Eric Van Royen. He's my he's my guy. I I saw. I know. I'm out. I'm out. Okay. I don't know why. I just saw him today just milling around on the par three, and it reminded me of when we saw him at players, and he was fucking out of the gates. He was like, Oh my god, I don't know if five. We were watching it. I was so I, I was like, This is sick. Yeah. And then he missed the cut. So I'm, I just like <laughs> you're out. He but makes, he has to beat Schwartzel and Christo. I like Schwartzel. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> fucked two years ago. Charles, good. He, uh, there's gonna be. That's the thing about the Masters. Like every yeah. year, a couple g- g- good players just fucking eject. Like play, miss the cut, play fucking terrible, Basically. and a couple random guys are in the mix almost every year. Like we could sit here the entire night and talk about guys, and we probably wouldn't figure out <laughs> or come close. Who do you think's more likely to mix, Reed or Sergio? Uh, Sergio. Sergio has Reed. been dialed. He Sergio has been dialed. He I like Reed, like, dude. But you like just Reed. said that the guys who play good the year before tend to not play good the the sure. next year. Sure, I'm fine. I, I like Sergio then. I bet Max Homa to make the cut at minus three eighty. How much did you bet on that? Enough. <laughs> you probably. What? Why are you? How do you even like? I'm not. So I usually only bet mostly outright. So you guys know this. I, like, do, I don't do that a lot. Only the man, where do you thing. like come across? Like you're just like you see minus three eighty on Max, and you're like fuck that 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 number is a good <laughs> number. A like you, like I, like how do you even think of that? <laughs> I, I'm I, like I'm curious. I thought it, no, I just thought it was just a <laughs> he's gonna make the cut. Don't overthink it. He's been play like he will make the cut, but like home. He definitely could miss the cut. His major track record of all of the good players is no. He sounded really good on part of my take, but to be honest, really good. They asked him the hard questions there. Yeah, I did. No, Adam, did you listen oh. to, to Berksy? Uh, no, I did not. I, w- I was going to, but I, like, I'm just, I'm waiting to see on Brooks. I'm not like, I I didn't usually before Oak Hill, I was listening to all the Brooks stuff. So if you're a, like, a Brooks supporter, you guys know this. I'm, I'm a Brooks guy of all yeah. of the three of us. I'm far and away the biggest Brooks guy. I don't feel good about Brooks. I'm being honest. I'm betting him. Damn. I will root with all of my heart. I'm concerned though. So I didn't want to listen. Any, so I didn't want to listen to any more stuff. I was just like, I need my distance from Brooks. I'm going to turn on the TV. <laughs> like, like when Brooks tees off, I'm going to be in and I hope major Brooks shows up and all of this is a thing of the past, but. So how are we actually going to watch tomorrow? Like four or five and six are featured. It's four, five, six, and, and then like Amen. Amen Corners Amen Corner. featured, and, and sometimes featured and 15, 16. So, like, once your guy gets to the back nine, you can see him a lot because, like, they go 11, 12, 13, and then you can see him 15, 16. The, the Scotty not being featured group thing, like, I don't Criminal. always like hop on the bus of like shitting on dumb stuff because, like, you could do it every day because there's so much dumb stuff that happens all the time. Here we go. Yeah, like the announcer saying, like, a guy gained trophies <laughs> last time. How are we going to watch? This is the answer. Like Matt's always, <laughs> <laughs> but like that's so disrespectful to Scotty and Matt. We talked about this on the players pod where like no one at the course is watching Scotty in his practice rounds. And then you turn on golf channel and no one's talking about Scotty for the masters. He's a, def- he's a champion at Augusta, oh, the number you're one plus right. player in the world. And you're not going to feature group him in the first round. Like whoa. no one cares. That's insane. We gotta, we gotta go back and clip what we said about that and about him not being featured. Quote tweeted with that. That's absurd. I feel like people talk about Scotty a lot. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. It's all Rory. It's all JT. It's yeah, all Ricky. You have a real job, BK. We have all day to see what people are talking yeah, about like, on, I don't, the, on the internet. So it, we're. I feel like they talk about Scotty a lot. But so, but overall, you agree that it was insane for him not to be featured group than everyone playing. Yeah, I mean, there must be a reason. Like, Roy, it must Roy be. Probably, like, I don't like, want to be on camera. <laughs> like he he's gonna be in the TV window in the afternoon on Friday if they play. Who would you bet in the first two rounds three ball or maybe just first round first round three ball between Xander Rory and Scotty? Hypo- hypothetical three ball. Shout out golfdevinsers.com. Yeah, nobody. Yeah. I mean, um, I could see Xander beating Scotty in round one. Yeah, I think I I. You can't. I don't I think feel like Xander was, fucked you around one last year. I bet him, and I thought he was going to win. Yeah, I bet him last year too. Wanted yeah, to we first round last year. Vic, I feel like you had such a good Masters Adam. card. The, and you didn't have that pro. Like, knock on wood, because it could easily go wrong. I would say the last three years, 
No, I haven't had the winner, but I've had <laughs> multiple, the process. Yeah, the process. I've had multiple guys in the mix who are like knocking on the door or get off to like a good start and are in there for a while. I think I had, I should bet my fucking card first round leader because I've had the first round leader two years in a row. I had Sung Jay and Vic. Wow. So I like, I got to do that, right? I got to bet my fucking card. Cam Young's your first round leader. Oh, you didn't bet him. You bet Cam oh, Smith. I like, yeah. I think Cam Smith. Jurors. What's your first round leader card? True. It's only for the yeah. If I, if I came on here against the Vince Eric's brand, you have to break the uh, Dub Club uh, first round leader card and give us some <laughs> some insights on who's okay. on the card. Because honestly, it's I get annoyed. I saw one responded to a street like, "When are the first round leader picks coming out?" After I, you hit, I legit get annoyed when Jer- like I didn't know Jers had a guy first round leader. Next thing I'm on Twitter and it's like Jers Vic clapping a first round leader. You gotta send us your first round leader card. Like, come on. Wait, Adam, why did you bet? Um, Akshay last week because uh, Akshay was like the most like process pick because like he there's that crazy streak of people coming in with like a huge spike of growth around the week (laughs) that's like what is the ROI on that what next you put you put so many guys there's no world where that's 7x yeah (laughs) I'm not 66, kidding. 66, 55, 80, 80, 60, 43, 90, 40. It's, there's it's right no here. 510. And how much? So is, it's 6.9x. Sorry. How much did you bet? What? 510. That's count. Oh, to return. To, 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 to return either. 35. Doesn't matter. But on auction, <laughs> it was just because he was fucking with his irons. And like every winner at Valero has fucked with their irons. The, the start. It's in, like, it's actually insane. Every guy comes into Valero off like a plus six approach effort and then wins. And he had the best spike approach effort of anyone in the field the week before. In, that was uh, it. That was it. Like that was, that was, I was, all it came to. I love Akshay. Like before this, I'd always liked him. So I was glad to be on him because I bet him at a uh, fucking Barbasol. And then he won Barracuda, and I, I've always been pissed about that. And so, like, that's been freed from like my weight on my my uh, shoulders now. Because uh, Vinny Norms, where is it? Where sure had 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 him. Him. And he had like the worst hedge of all. These time. these are the guys I didn't. I almost bet first on here, but I didn't bet. These are the last guys off the card. You've listed off the whole field. Sure, you like, you even even Chef Twelve. No, I I almost did, but then I I couldn't. That was the yeah. worst bet of all time. Yeah, I didn't. That's why I didn't. Wait, someone DMs like... me before it goes. It was like Scotty wire to wire to wire winner twenty two to one. It's like should I nuke? And I'm like, those are the worst odds I've ever seen, ever. <laughs> what? Like twenty two to one to go wire to wire. Seeing Burns on there uh, made me remember. I saw. I want to. I want to meet him in person because he lives in the city. DJ, right? Like he lives. I don't know him personally, but like your boy. He lives in the what? We're actually. Um, I think we're gonna watch the Masters in Manhattan Friday. If you want to post up, we're going to the Tiger Woods bar. I'm so down. 100%. For some loggers. Literally down. I'm okay. for sure down. Because I like. I've. I know him from Twitter, but like we never talked. But like I like yeah. his vibe, and like he seems like a cool guy. Yeah, great guy. But I saw he was like all caps tweeting about sam burns and i almost replied but i feel like i I don't know him well enough to like say anything yeah. where it's like if, I, if i'm am i joking because obviously i'd be joking but sam burns is my guy more than anyone he might be the worst bet he has no chance of winning <laughs> like legitimately yeah. no chance i agree i do agree all of winning the masters and when I saw that, I was like, he's just because he's not a golf guy, right? He's just like he like pops in. He and then, like, like pops likes like he's more other sports, but he's like he bets golf, like his hit a bunch of winners. Because so like, like you're his golf guy. I think you need to tell him like no burns. No, like, I what, told he, him. He like tweeted his card, and I'm like, all these guys have no chance. <laughs> like he wait, he, he he oh he bets Sam Burns out, right? What was his card? I don't know, but he, it was he like just like Becky. Uh, Becky's a good bet. De- like I hate the odds so. Much. I don't know why you like Decky so much. They're like they're horrible odds. It's one of the worst bets you could ever make. But at the same time, if you don't, it's the if you don't know anything about golf, take that Matt had. That was a good take. Like if you I know. don't know anything about golf, you sit down and you you check in from time to time. You watch the confuse you at events. first. You're yeah, but then you're like, decky has been fucking. He's won the Masters. He's playing great. He won Genesis. He can beat Scotty twenty to one on Hideki. Like. In that sense, it's the most obvious bet in the world. But since we know that Hideki's normally like 50, 60 to 1, we won't touch it with a nine foot pole. But the winner of the Masters always has horrible odds, and I'm afraid it's going to be Hideki. Really? That was my take. That was literally my take. 
yeah, I agree. I so you see, you're, you're no chance on Ducky BK. No chance. Like none. No. Like him and Rom parlay not to win. <laughs> <laughs> Minus three seventy. I would do that. <laughs> I would. I would guys. We should. I, I would. If Fanduel put that up, want to know who's like? So no uh, free advertising, but our boys at Sport Trade, they uh, their whole thing is like betting the no market because they've got those like really good no prices. I was telling them we need to have a segment that we do where we pick our like no chance players of the week and hype up Sport him. Trade because in in parlay them on fucking Sport Trade. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Can Nick Dunlap make the cut? Dude, yes. <laughs> Fucking Nicky Dunn. Why Every not? lineup? Uh no, I haven't thought of Dunlap the whole week, but I like Dunlap when you can drive it wherever you want. Actually, I liked Elvis. I haven't thought I forgot that Dunlap was even in the tournament. But now that you bring him up, because I was down for uh, Dunlap in Houston and he played good. Matt, remember? He did. You were, yeah. You were, yeah. You were oh, hard. I said I was Dunlap hard out. Hard yeah. out. And I brought him up. I he drives it far. He hits his irons good. He's starting to hit the club he's, face. He's starting to hit the center of the club face. Yeah, like your take that he, or I think you stole the take from Rick that he doesn't drive yeah. it far. He's like top 20 in like all of the distance. Stuff. Like he fucking he, sets it. He literally was not, but he. I think not. it was just like small sample size. Like he'd only hit a few he drives. Been, it had to he, been, yeah. he hits it far, but he also, he's playing with Rom, right? Like, but he's a winner on the, it's insane. He's a winner on the PGA Tour. Hey, fuck. That is. That is true. <laughs> Sam Burns. Same. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, you never. I'm always rooting for you guys when I don't have somebody in the mix. I really <laughs> but, did. I really didn't want Sam Burns to win because he like. Yeah, like Devo didn't want you to hit an auction. Yeah, that was. Yeah. That to was, have that happen in that moment, like I know, De- I know Devo like wasn't. Yeah, there. like literally like the most stressful back nine of all time, and he pops in like, like oh, like what's going on with the guy? Like, would you guys agree? <laughs> like, I Jersey and I already talked about, it, but like BK. That would have been one of the most horrific losses in the history of golf. Like he was six shot lead. He shot minus two on the back nine. And Denny McCarthy of all people made eight birdies on the, that's never like. Yeah, was, it would have been bad. I mean, it then, was minus six, 60,000. Yeah. It's like worse than Ryan Fox fucking with a three shot lead on the, the last. Oh, one. way. And he like, should have lost. Yeah. But like he shouldn't have made that. Puck. <laughs> but for Divas, tech, like, and I've tried to like, I've done, I feel like I'm doing a good job in life in general of not letting like golf betting affect my like feelings that much. Cause it's like, it can get so you guys know this, it can get fucking frustrating. You, like when you're getting fucked, you know, by golf betting, it's just like this, is, you, you know that like, you know, more than anybody. yeah. And it. so I've been trying to like be chill about it. And even in when, and so when he like the whole week, I was like, oh, he's doing good. Like he should win, but like, whatever. And then even going to the final round, I was like, I, like he, whatever, it doesn't matter to people. I said, it's totally fine. By the time it got to the ninth hole, once he birdied one, you're like, all right, give me my. Yeah, ball. once he birdied like the first three out of the first four holes, and no one else was. What? Denny wasn't like hitting his irons good or making any putts when he got to the ninth. Denny, that's why it was so crazy. Denny was playing terrible, like he was playing not good on the front nine, and then all of a sudden he makes a long putt on ten, and then Akshay three putts from like inside of him, and from that moment on, it was it was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. But, yeah, I mean, know, I really can't believe he made that putt on eighteen. He has dog. Like, yeah, he he went wire. The guys don't go wire to wire, and he went wire to wire, overcoming like that, like shit happening, having to make that putt. But yeah, I, I mean, do... it was like the best, like most. Well, I guess it's different, but like JT was the last guy to like lead after by three for three rounds, and he shot like a fifty nine in in the first round of Sony. And, like, you don't beat P Raj in a playoff if you don't have dog. You know? And then yeah. like JT. Think good. about the guys he's beaten in a playoff. <laughs> Patrick <laughs> Rogers and Denny Mack. Like I, you know, I'm so I'm sort of out on Akshay until he can beat like a real good player in a playoff. <laughs> like if you were like, yeah, give me two guys that are like decent at golf, but like you have to be in the playoff. I think those are might be my top two. I'm yeah, just, like, no fucking chance. I uh, <laughs> that is that's my take. No, because I know Adam. Then. Like you, like you're jo- you were Jones for a winner. Or, like you hadn't hit a a winner on the PGA Tour. Like same with me for a while. And you were like, yeah, <laughs> like I need this with Akshay. Like, come well, on. so that was the like, thing. It should be easy because that's what was going through my mind. It was like, if this doesn't win, how am I ever going to hit a winner ever again? Yeah. Like, and so I'm glad that it didn't happen. It was so crazy how quickly it flipped from like being totally, totally fucked to like the easiest win ever because how i felt about the playoff was like i'm glad that he made the playoff thank god like he's still alive but this is terrible 
But if it becomes them just hitting wedges close on 18 over and over and over again, Denny's going to make the putt every single time. And at some point, Akshay was going to miss. And so I was like, it's going to, Akshay has to stuff one. That's the only possible way. And then hope that Denny fucks up, but for him to fuck up that bad, fucking miracle. And I'd love, it'd be great to go back to back, hit a Masters winner. That's Wendy. It. I mean, now we now we have a squad ride. I know it hasn't gone well, but it's a shadow squad ride, so maybe it will go well. Yeah. Don't I mean, I think Sal well. like finishes like T seven. Like I don't think he wins, but like I think he's relevant. I also don't trust Sal to like finish, but I <laughs> I feel like I've been watched I didn't ever really consider myself a Zal guy because I think for the longest time before Brookline, I had never really bet him. But like people you guys were like more Zal guys because you had bet him a lot. And then I saw him in the flesh at Brooklyn. I was like, this guy fucks. Like, <laughs> like I'm every other guy's fucking around in their practice round. And Zal's treat. And this was Andy said this yesterday. I thought this was like having seen Zal, this made sense when he was saying that Zal and Teagues were playing golf and whoever I can't remember who else was like Copeland. Yeah, was like fucking around. That's what Zal does. Like he treats his practice round so serious. And when you see it in the flesh, you're like, fuck, this guy's so serious about his golf. Like he must be one of the best players. Like he's just got to be. And, but now I feel like I've bet him pretty much every fucking time in a big event since then. I bet him every time, but I don't go into weeks thinking like Zal, Zal, I'm a Zal guy, and I, he always ends up on the card. Let's go, let's do it. Yeah, I'm down. I would, I will say, I would not, I would not have bet him if Matt didn't bet him. Really? Thank you. Yeah, like the guy who bet him at Houston because it makes sense, and like you bet Zal when it makes. Don't sense. say like, that. Don't say that. That was your rationale. I don't. Brett Zalad. I mean, you guys. bet you to be fair, BK, you bet Wendy 14 to 1. But I think that was a good bet. I think that was a good bet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I wouldn't have done it if I knew the back, but like I hit the winners or whatever. Um, <laughs> do you count? I just ordered my Houston Open shirt and my you, uh Liv Dural shirt. So I was I actually was thinking about this today. Do you count Stevie Yeggs as a, a winner, like an outright winner this year, since you you bet him in the without Scotty market? <laughs> what <laughs> what do you mean? Like, do you like it was not the outright market. It was the without Scotty market. Like, do you? But yeah, like, like, like when, that, like when you recap yeah. your winners at the end of the yeah. year, like, are like you write it? Okay, Stephen Yeager. Matt- no, I, I think that if you like lost in a playoff to Scotty and I still cash forty to one, like I think that that would have been amazing. Like, but I that's why that I'm happened. always out on the out, like the without market, because so, even if no it hits, hits, like obviously it pays like. From a betting perspective, it may mathematically make sense. I have no fucking idea. Like, I'm not smart enough to figure it out. But it doesn't count. It doesn't count as, as an outright winner to hit in the without market. I'm inter- I'm introducing that. I mean, I would go, forward. like, I would go without <laughs> Scotty at Memorial. What do you think? Oh, God, okay. that was such a good bet that I placed on at Memorial. He's the best in, bet in, of all time, in, I think. That, actually, that's what I was thinking about during uh, was Akshay. Because Akshay was about to have the worst, like, best strokes game performance tee to green in, like, the history of not winning a <laughs> tournament. And the only other guy they kept talking about was Scotty at Memorial. And I was like, I also bet fucking Scotty at Memorial. And I was like, this is going to happen to me twice. I'm the most Dude, cursed better. Hey, that was a great day. And to, to Denny McCarthy, he was in the mix there, too. <laughs> Wow, you would have lost. But oh no, well, Danny. I mean, yeah, um, that was so good. Fuck. Anything else? Any other topics? Or <laughs> we've yeah. traversed an unbelievable like range of topics on this. Oh, yeah, we should good. pod more often. Yeah, so we really let's should pod more often. All right, let's wrap this up. Thank you guys for joining me on a short notice. Uh, Are we one more sleep. Early lanes. <laughs> Uh, event, really, really. I saw some this I did this was a good tweet. I don't know who the person was. It just showed up on my timeline. Somebody like two years ago said that Fitz <laughs> uses masters to warm up for RBC. And then Fitz won. Like, that's a good take. I like that. Do you take, like so. anyone for RBC? Fitz, you can bet guys back to back at RBC. I bet Smith last year, back to back, almost hit. Didn't I'm win. betting Fitz back to it. I'm, if Cantlay gains, gains a single stroke on approach, Cantlay. no, no, no. It, it, if Cantlay is alive when he walks on the property at RBC, <laughs> he's on the fucking card. Now the problem is going to be the problem is going to be that even if Cantlay like misses the cut this week, I bet he's like twenty five to one. Exactly. I hope. Yeah, you're right. Like they're I not going to make the cut, so we're good. They're never going to make his odds better at RBC because he just fucks so hard there. And it's like Jenny when he showed up at Jenny because it, if Cantlay was like thirty five to one at RBC, even off of missed cuts, people would be throwing money from the rooftops to bet on Cantley. Like he's not going to sneak up on yeah. anybody at fucking Hilton Head. And that's your RBC Heritage preview. <laughs> so. All right. Um, good. Anything else? Yeah. Hey. Yep. Peace. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. Masters, one more sleep. Let's get after it. Good luck, everyone.